Hi, I'm Rusty from the Rusty Harden Studio in Tip City, Ohio, and today we are creating another doodle with color. I've kind of gone with a little bit of a fall theme today, and I'm looking forward to doodling with you. So let me share with you my supplies. I'm using, my paper is Bristol Smooth. The brand that I have with me, although it does come in different brands, is the Strathmore Visual Journal. I get them from this journal because the size of the papers are consistent for me, but it's always the Bristol Smooth. The pen that I use is a Uniball Signo 207. It's a Micro 207. It's a retractable gel pen. I love these pens. It's waterproof and fade proof. And the way it glides over the Bristol Smooth paper whew, makes me happy. The pan set that I'm using today is from Derwent Ink Tents. It's their Ink Tents pen paint. There's 22 colors in a black and white. And in that set comes a water brush. I like using the water brush with these. It doesn't transfer a lot of water. So I, um, don't have to worry about my paper having to handle a lot of water. So um, we're going to set these things aside. This is the drawing we're going to work from work with today. And, <laughs> and here's my paper. There we go. So I'm going to guide you through the drawing step by step. I'm going to um, show you on some index cards here first blank index cards and then I'll draw them draw them onto the onto the paper then we'll move right on to putting add in color so I want to start first with this swooshy line I I put the um, the stem of the drawing on the left side of my paper and I wanted to swing it up so here we go okay that felt good be kind of sketchy be sketchy, hold your pen lightly. Doodles are meant to be relaxing and fun. So, you know, take a few deep breaths. We're not striving for perfection here. We just want to enjoy what we're doing. Perfection is overrated. And there comes another sweepy line. But this sweepy line I'm going to bring down because that's where this little fantasy acorn is going to um, be hanging out. So um, let me, that's, that's the basic structure for the, for the drawing. So let's get going. So on this swooshy line that I have out there, I'm going to make a V. So I say, if you can relate to the shape of something, you can draw anything. So this is the letter V and that's how I'm going to get started. Let me use a heavier pen on my, um, Don't have one handy. I'm just going to go ahead and mark over this a couple of times. That's all that I would use. Just, I would only use the other pen for demo anyway. So I'm going to bring a line in and a line in. They don't have to be facing each other really. So I'm going to bring another line up and up, a line in and in. And this last line just wants to be a point. So there's my there's my leaf. I'll withdraw over those lines a few times. There we go. I'll make a line up the center and a few lines off. Now off of this line, let me go ahead and put this here. So I'm going to make my V. There's my V. Maybe I want a little, a little taller. So I'm going to bring a line in. This side, I'm going to bring a line in, zag a line up, I'm going to zag a line up. Again, I'm going to come in with a line, coming back in, and it's this top line that makes it look like a leaf. I'm going to do an upside down V, and there's my there's my leaf shape. Put a line up the center, and have a few lines off of that. Now I'm going to um, go over this a few times. And um, by all means, you know, use use your pencil first if you want to. My ink is water soluble and, fra and uh, fade proof, but if yours isn't, do it in pencil, then come back and um, add your color and then come and use your pen over it. 
this works for me because um, I have a uh, I have one already ready to go so I like to let the ink kind of dry I'm gonna make another swishy line I like to let the ink um, dry all the way or cure so this is um, this is a teardrop shape or a petal shape if it's upside down it's a petal shape or a, either way anyway so if I have an oval and I round off the top part of the oval and bring these two lines down to a tapered point that's these shapes so that's when I put one here one here one here I'm gonna put one here and then off of there I'm gonna put three circles and in the bigger circle I'm gonna put a dot in the middle I like making just fill in lines and shapes and dots it makes it interesting doesn't it so now off of this side I'm gonna make a curly Q line boom I'm gonna make a swishy line here I'm gonna put heart shapes on this um, in this center area so I'm going to start with my first one I'm going to make them gradually smaller uh, one more there we go I'll go over them a few times too it makes such a difference when you go over them a few times Use whatever paper you like. Use whatever drawing utensil you like. There we go. I want to connect that. And I'm going to have a few little swishy lines coming off to the side. But I didn't connect them with the stem. I didn't feel like that was necessary at all. So I'm going to come back up this stem. And I'll go over my stems a few times. I want to make a curly Q line here. And I'll make a curly Q line here right here I'm gonna put a leaf a leaf so if this was a petal shape and it can be a leaf shape but here's another leaf shape so it's going to be a little more rounded at the bottom and with the top it's really going to come to a dramatic point so if this was an oval I would round off my bottom I would bring my top two sides together so here I'm gonna put one And I put a line in it now this line that I put here in the center I'm going to bring it on down and make it part of a curly Q line just thought it made it interesting and I put a few dashes up there yep just wanted to make it interesting I'll go over that a couple times there we go so at hanging at the bottom here of this swoosh line is something like an acorn it's a fantasy acorn so I want to um, think in terms of this cap being kind of a half, whoop, upside down, right? Um, being being a half of an oval, upside down, half of an oval. So that's that's the shape I'm going for for the cap. So, so I'm going to make a circle right here. I'm going to go ahead and get, give myself the guidelines for it. So I'm going to make. Um, make this shape so down here for the cap I'm giving myself the guidelines for it it's okay because it's a doodle so whatever lines don't get used it's okay it's a doodle they'll just become part of it so I'm being very very sketchy with that but it's the center that I'm going to take one of these kind of petals and I'm going to make it down the center and I'm going to add the ones down here along the side there we go and these guys along the side and there's the cap to my fantasy acorn I'll go over the lines a few times there we go now I'm going to also think in terms of a pointed oval for this section down here so if these are my this is my cap okay I'm going to start here on the side I'm just going to kind of 
bring it down put a point at the end so I'm gonna start here remember be sketchy you can just continue to make adjustments when your hands sketchy and your lines are and your lines are light well that's more um, acor um, acorn shape than um, than what even this one is but I'm gonna put a few lines on the side and then some little circles come off the bottom I'm going to create this flower in between these two shapes first by um, making a circle I'm going to put a circle in my circle and fill it in I put some dots in there so I'm going to do this leaf shape but now I'm going to call them petal shapes but they're going to be a little bit more narrow one Yeah, we got one more. I put lines on the end of them. I don't know, this kind of felt like rays, doesn't it? I'm going to put um, some dark lines in the bottom of each petal. It's going to go over the petals, too. There we go. I feel good about this. Am I missing anything in the main design? No, I like it. Now I've added a little design down here. I enjoy drawing something different. This doesn't get color into every one of them. So um, I'm just gonna put it down here. I'm gonna you do this or don't do this, it's up to you. But um, I'm gonna make a, a kind of a straight line down and then I'm gonna loop up and have this cute little this line design right here. I'm going to go over it a few times. There we go. I'm going to put some lines in it. Put some little leaf vines on it. There we go. So the shape that I'm going for, for the overall piece is, so this, this, this is a heart shape, which we did up here. So this is a heart shape. So if I take that same heart shape, but I don't bring down the center part, I have this. And then I just make a little knot on top and I get this shape. So that's what I'm going for here. So I'm going to do a heart shape, but I'm not going to do the, I'm not going to bring down the center. Heart shape, but not going to bring in the center. So I'm going to raise that up. So I put a kind of an oval shape inside of that and then filled in my lines all the way around it. Of course added dots in the middle of it so there we go I like them all right so that's my design my drawing I would come back and add add a few extra lines here and there over go over my lines to make things a little stronger but let's go ahead I have another one over here on the side let me go ahead and grab it and let me grab the, the paint so I'm using the Jouet ink tents pan set. There we go. I'm going to spray my pans. This is, um, this is just a, um, this little water sprayer that I got when, um, for my glasses. I mean, I have fancy ones, but you know, use what you have. Any spray bottle work. I'm going to, even though I'm not using all my colors, let me move this down a little bit. Even though I'm not using all my colors, I'm going to um, spritz all of them. I always tell myself I never know when I might want to just go up there and reach and grab a color. Ink tents are, um, they're not a watercolor, they're a water media. They're actually an ink, 
and um, that being said, they um, they're really they're permanent when they dry, and that is so much fun. We have different techniques. Um, we mix blend the colors right in while they're wet, or I come back and do a um, it's called a glaze. It's a wet color over a dry color. So I'm going to implement those different techniques through here, but I'm going to start with my my um, my leaf shape, and I've 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 gone a little bit fall fall colors here. So I'm going to start out with um, putting a little bit of water in here first. Now the water brush doesn't release a lot of water, so it doesn't really fill up your paper. So you don't have to have a watercolor paper in order to make this happen. So I'm going to get a little bit of my my sunshine yellow there and I want to go ahead and put it in first and it is brilliant. If you want your colors lighter, add more water. If um, you want them really bright and intense, you know, not as much water. It's just really that simple. Now I'm going to go ahead and pick up some of this um, mango orange right next to it. I want to mix them and blend them together. Don't want to wait for it to dry, although I will in other places. But see, those colors are so pretty when they mix together. I'm going to go ahead and pick up a little bit more. If I need a little bit of water to pick up, I have a water container over there, but it's really not necessary for me to go there and get it. I can just squeeze out a drop or two of water right into my palette, and I'll come and I'll, if I need a little bit of water, I'll just come and get it from there. So now I have, I put down the um, lemon yellow. I put down the mango. It's not lemon yellow, it's sun yellow. Sorry about that. Um, the sun yellow and the mango. Now I'm going to pick up a little bit of the bright orange. And I want to blend that in also. But I don't want to go all the way to the top. I want to keep the bottom just a little bit more, more um, color variant. That way I keep the light at the top is really the point. Then I'm going to pick up some cherry. This is, this is, a, this is a really nice red. I'm just going to add a little bit of, I'm gonna, I've got too much, which is okay because I need to blend it around. But I'm going to take my paper towel and I'm just going to take the color off my, off my water brush. I'm going to come get this now and pull this through. Yeah, that's perfect. Look, if you end up, if you end up with um, too much color anywhere, take, take the color and the water out of, your, out of your brush gently with paper towel. Then you can come in and you can lift some of that color back. So a lot of versatility here. It's just about getting experienced with the um, with the um, techniques. So now I'm going to come with this um, sun yellow, and I'm going to put a little bit of it right here. So here's my sun yellow. I'm going to put a little bit right here. I want to touch a little bit of mango with it. So I'm actually blending my color here instead of in this space. Just want to come in one time and just get this pretty little yellow with a little bit of uh, mango. And it's pretty. That's it. I'm going to um, move on now to the red hearts. So I'm going to just take my paper towel, gently wipe out my colors. This is where I'm going to put the um, red. This is called poppy red. So I'm going to put the put the poppy red in these little hearts that are now flowers, and um, I'm going to let them dry. I'm going to come back and I'm going to add poppy red. I'm going to add yellow right over it. The order that you put a wet color over a dry color is really significant. So in this case, I'm putting down the red first and then going to come back with the sun yellow and put the sun yellow over it. Now I added these. I added these when I did this one because I had a lot more space. I'm going to paint those green. I made the same little heart shapes, but I'm, I'm just imagining that they are leaves. So no doodles perfect, but don't throw them away. So I'm going to wipe out the color out of my brush and... Um, so you can just squeeze the water out of your brush and that'll help rinse it out. And um, sometimes I just squeeze it over my paper towel. I'm going to go now with the hooker's green, which is here. I'm going to, um, I want to paint this leaf with the hooker's green. And I'm going to come back and glaze the lemon sherbet over it in a little while. So yeah, a little, little bit more. I'm going to follow my stem lines with this. This brush has such a nice point on it. I'm going to follow these stems with it. This is the hooker's green. Yes. 
I'm very happy with that. This is not a really long, long um, involved painting. It's just it's just fun to do it. So I'm gonna get some. Let me come back and get some of my lemon yellow. Could I've just gone in there when I've had it in other places and go move it around? Yeah, yes, I could. But sometimes I want to play with the um, mixing the colors in the wet spot in a wet place with the wet paint. So I don't want to um, lose that opportunity. Right, so I've just added the um, sun yellow. I'm going to come and get the yellow sherbet, sherbet lemon. It's it's a it's a yellow with some green in it, just a touch, and I love it, love it, love it, love it. And I'm going to use that same color and fill in my um, my circle there. I'm going to come back up with that lemon sherbet and fill in those spots too. So I'm going to take my um, kiwi green and I'm going to put it in these little hearts right here sweet all right so those are going to dry while they're drying I'll come back over in a little while and put my um my yellow over the red and put my kiwi into um into that leaf but let's go ahead and do our acorn now why are there lines there because I messed up and when I mess up I don't quit I don't give up I just I just keep working with it. So I'm going to start with a little bit of the um, bright orange. I'm going to paint it thin in this acorn top. If you mix green and orange, you get a pretty little brown. And um, that's what I'm going to do for this top. I'm going to add some green right into this orange and it's going to, it's going to look brown. So I'm going to get my hookers green. My brush is barely damp and I'm going to put it right in over these segments. And because it's wet, I can move it around and get highlights. So there we go. I just took the um, moisture off my, off my brush. So I have this orange and green interplay right, right in there and I love it. So I'm going to rinse out my brush. Pretty good now because um, I don't know, felt like I needed to. I'm going to get a little bit of the bright orange, put it down through the bottom of the acorn. I'm going to pick up some mango, put a little bit of that color in there. I'm actually going to blend it right on the spot and I'm going to get a little bit of my yellow. So here we go gonna blend all these guys together and you can see how how they play beautifully together and while I have this color I'm gonna fill in these dots now I want this a little bit more I want this a little bit more brown so I'm gonna come and get my um, little bit of green with it again and barely touch any of it on each side and I'm so I'm actually just blending right here right on the paper and I'm gonna add a touch of red now the red with the green is going to really um, be pretty. It's the complement, so it kind of really grays it down. Because it's fall, so I'm not trying to have really bright colors. But look, you use, you know, you use your own color taste. And there you have it. Let me have a look. Looks pretty good so far. I'm going to come now and add um, my lemon yellow over these hearts. totally changes the look completely changes the look and I love it and let me have a look around I needed to get some kiwi green and put it on put it in this leaf so that would glow and I think this looks a little weak so I'm going to come back up here and get a little bit of um, lemon yellow mix it with a little bit of the um, the mango and I'm going to paint over it again much better much much better okay so i'm happy with this i hope you are too i enjoyed it um so um, in my description i mentioned where um, you can order either one of these supplies i have online classes through eventbrite i have some free doodle classes that link is also in the um 
is in the description. So follow me there. I have watercolor classes, also three Eventbrite available. So thank you so much and um, look, doodle on.